the what do you call this area? The lecture hall. The couches. Okay, there's a kitchen. Hi, faith teacher. I love faith teacher. Yeah. Oh, that's us. Hello, everybody. Oh, the echo. Slight echo. Is it still echoing when we're talking here? I think it's echoing because... Are there two audio mics on the laptop and on our mic? Are we still echoing here? I didn't eat anything for breakfast. Is this audio too quiet or too loud or is it fine? For breakfast, echo is slight. Okay. I just eat a bagel every day for breakfast. I don't know what that is, but yeah, we'll just have to deal with it for now. It's the first time I've used tried to set up. No one is fit to survive. It's hard because also we have the volume on the TV. But it's not like you're going to it's coming up. No, not on the TV. Hello? Hello? And then echo cancellation link to the that word at the bottom. You still echo now? Or is it better? Good. Okay, we have some ice breaking questions for you guys too. Um, yeah, since we're all staying at home now because of quarantine, all the guys shower. Are you guys showering? Yeah, yeah nobody's really gonna know if you know if you're hiding or not. How do you like it? How much have you been showering? Uh, I shower whenever I need to go out, so maybe once a month. Once a month? Or once a week for church. Oh, I don't know. I shower like twice a week. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I thought I like every other day. Oh. I just don't really do it dirty. Or whenever I need to go out. They don't need to go to school in person every day. Shower every day after school. I just got lazy, but I don't want to shower every day. Yes. Hello. Um, okay, next question. For those of you in school, so not Raymond teacher or faith teacher, where do you guys host your classes? Because I know a lot of people use Zoom, but my school also uses Google, Google Classroom. And then your school, Caleb, they use something else. Yeah, they use like Adobe Connect. That's weird. Uh, yeah, do you guys use Zoom or Google Classroom or Adobe Connect? Because I use Google Classroom, but my little sister also uses Zoom for the same school district. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, Learning management crypto. I've never heard of that. I'm sure it's great, though. Google Classroom, we can download plugins for our cameras, so we just freeze our cameras whenever we don't want our teachers to see what we're doing. Yeah. Canvas? Yeah. What is, what is Canvas? 
think there's a canvas app that's good for making like posters that we use. I don't know. The also streaming thing. Do you do you use two at the same or two for one's class? Google Class Command Zoom, or do you guys just use one? Oh, that's so confusing. I feel bad for you. Our school is only legally allowed to use Google Classroom, so we can't switch to Zoom uh, or anything else. Yeah. You have to choose through three. Well, I don't know what law we're under, but like they're just legally not supposed to use other things other than Google Classroom for our district. All right. Next question. So my next question is: How many of your vacation plans have been canceled by COVID nineteen? Oh, I was gonna go to Korea this year, I, I think, for my little sister, but we couldn't go because of Corona. But Korea was really uh, strict about quarantine, so yeah. we were trying to allow to go. Oh, no. Oh, you went to Korea. I was lucky. One of my friends still went to Korea just to take the SAT, so oh, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. two trips and Ali mm -hmm. didn't make any plans. That's more okay. Oh, that sounds fun. Too bad it all canceled though. Oh. Uh, they also went to Korea, but didn't get canceled. And you still went? I watched those videos on YouTube about like quarantine in Korea. Because you have to stay two weeks in hotels before you're allowed to go outside. I got to stay at my grandparents' house because they live in like the um, grassy places and well, the place where there's no COVID. So if you have family in Korea, then you don't need to stay in a hotel in your oh. city. I can't see who's talking, but that sounds interesting. Yeah, that was right Um. Okay, for now, uh, can we keep our mics muted? But if you can turn on your cameras so we can see your faces, please. Yeah. 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 Try to type in the chat for us to hear first what you're saying. Yeah. Everyone, if you can, please turn on your cameras so we can see each other's faces. Yeah. Like see my face. All right. Uh, my next question is: uh, If quarantine wasn't in place, where would you be right now? Or like, where would you want to be? Like, without research. Oh, yes, we can. I always want to be in bed anyway, so quarantine doesn't really change anything. Okay, wait a few more minutes for people to in. Yeah, here we go. Why the stack is. She's not here. Oh, oh yeah, basically moved away, so. No, we are not. Yeah. We're just here to hang out for a few minutes before we start service. Yeah. After ALC finished, so. ALC was here before, but now they're done. Yeah, I'd rather be in San Diego too. Why do I rather stay here? Because the weather is better here. Well, I like the weather here better. I don't like cold. Yeah. Okay, so should we get into announcements? Okay. So for this week's announcements now, uh, this week we have our Wednesday night part prayer again, continuing on Wednesdays at 7.30. You can find us on Zoom. And for this Saturday, we have our fellowship night again for uh, more games and to hang out. So we have uh, more activities planned for this Saturday. So please come out and hang out with us. We have fun activities planned for all of us to play. And 
Uh, yeah. Also, if you're finding this video on YouTube, we're recording our services and posting them on YouTube. But please don't forget that we're hosting this live on Zoom. So if you're seeing this, uh, just record it on YouTube. Come find us on Zoom on Sundays instead of waiting for YouTube live streams. Yeah. So that's it for announcements. Uh, please welcome up Idan for our prayer. All right. Good morning, guys. Uh, glad to have you guys here. As you see, we're doing something new. Um, and so our service is going to start at 11.15 uh, with the countdown. And for the next 10 minutes or so, what we're doing is we're here to just kind of talk and hang out. And so um, for those, I think there's like 30 some of you guys in the chat. And so only five of you guys were interacting. And so we just want to encourage you when those questions are coming out um, that you guys will fill a chat box so that we can um, yeah, just interact and um, yeah, just be able to catch up with one another a little bit more. This is a luxury um, that we get to have while we're doing it via Zoom. Um, so please interact with us. Please turn on your cameras. We want to see you guys. Um, we won't spotlight you so that you won't be recorded and put onto the YouTube. Okay, so it'll only be us. And so you can still be in your PJs and all of that stuff and um, you'll be okay. And so yeah, I just want to encourage you guys to uh, show your faces um, and to be a little bit more interactive um, in our service uh, in the days to come. All right. Um, so with that, uh, yeah, let's let's pray. Let's pray together uh, as we go into our Sunday service. Before I lift up a prayer, uh, why don't you guys take some time right now um, to just lift up a prayer of God. I want to engage with what you have in store for us today. That today we want to grab a hold of God. We want to grab a hold of his presence. We don't want this time and this moment to pass, but that we would be able to be steadfast um, and to slow down to say, Jesus, here I am working my heart. Uh, I feel like God has a really challenging message um, for us this Sunday. Uh, and so let's just ask God, prepare my heart, Lord, to receive. And so let's do that. Let's take a moment to lift that up in our prayer, uh, and then I'll pray for us, and we'll get into a time of worship. But let's take a moment. Let's pray. as we've prepared our hearts let's also take some time now to just say god i welcome you into my space i welcome you into even our zoom call holy spirit you are beyond technology you can manifest your presence in any place where your people desire it and so let's take a moment and let's just lift that up as our prayer um, this morning to say jesus in my room, in my home, in my place of sanctuary, God, would you be pleased to dwell in it? And so let's take a moment and let's lift that up as our prayer, and then I'll close us. Let's pray together. right now we welcome you into the areas in our life 
that we have yet to give to you. God, it's in your goodness, in your mercy, that you look upon us with favor. And so we give thanksgiving to the one and only Jesus who made that way for us, who made it possible for us. And so, Lord, this morning we want to enter with thanksgiving. We want to enter with praise to give to you because you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, God. And so this Sunday, give us the strength to worship. Give us a voice to lift up. Give us a heart to hear from you this afternoon. God, I thank you for the people here. I thank you for those who are joining us. Unite us by your spirit today. Thank you for everything that you are to us. Lift us up, Jesus. We need you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. And so I want to invite you guys into a time of worship. Um, again, please turn your cameras on if you're able. And um, yeah, stand and let's interact. Don't just be a consumer, but interact and, and, and join us in this time of worship. All right. So we'll see you soon.
Do you feel the darkness tremble when all the saints join in one song and all the streams flow as one river to wash away our brokenness? Here we see, when here we see that God you're moving, a time of true belief is coming when young and old. Turn to Jesus. Oh, fling wide you heavenly gates. Prepare the way of the risen Lord. So open up the doors and Heavenly gates, prepare the 
next song we're going to sing is called Promises. Um, I don't think we've done it for a Sunday, but we sang it last night, if you were there, <coughs> at the Saturday night service. Um, but yeah, this song just declares God's faithfulness in our lives. And yeah, I truly believe that if we, if we can give this song to God truly and we can really lift this song up as our prayer, yeah, faith will really arise. And yeah, where faith is, there's power. And so, yeah, as we sing this song, if you don't know it well, you can just kind of meditate on what we're singing and what we're declaring. Um, but yeah, I really hope that um, you will be able to sing this over your heart. Just what she says, and God of Abraham. Oh, God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what she said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow all we
Jesus, we de just declare your faithfulness over every person who is here. God, there's not a moment, Lord, where you grow weary. There's not a moment that you forget. But every second, every moment of our lives, God, has always been in your hands. As we have sung and declared, God, you are faithful to the end. Oh, God, that you would give us the strength and the perseverance to see that through, God. Lord, in trials, it's so easy for us to lay down that promise. And we find ourselves only more burdened. Lord, the covenant that you made with us. team. Thank you guys. Um, for those on the Zoom, welcome. Uh, hopefully, yeah, this is new. This is live. There is no like, you know, 30 second delay and stuff like that. So there's no opportunity for us to edit anything out or anything like that. Not that we did that before, um, but man, it, it's good. I hope that um, as we do this through the Zoom, that you guys will be able to be um, a little bit more interactive with us uh, and yeah j just chatting and you know seeing your wonderful faces I'm hoping that as the weeks go by more of your cameras will be turned on rather than off all right um, and so yeah we're glad to ha have you guys here live with us and um, if you do miss it um, don't worry we will post it on our um, on our YouTube page um, so that you guys can watch it if you guys love the message or love the worship, you guys can go and rewatch it during the week and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, um, just remember today at the end of the service, um, we are going to don't leave the Zoom. You were, excuse me, we're going to break you guys out into your small groups from there. All right. So make sure you guys stay. Don't leave. Um, we're watching. All right? We are watching you. So stick around. All right. All right. Um, so with that. Today, we're going to read um, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 12. And it might be coming out of left field for some of us, like, why are we all of a sudden in Genesis? And not only that, why are we talking about Cain and Abel? All right. Um, but we are. Uh, I feel that there's a word there for us today. Um, and yeah, let's read together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read like several verses at a time. I'm not going to read all the way through, um, but we'll read verses 1 and 2 together. All right, so now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain a worker of the ground. All right, so one of the first things that we need to know in that in this passage is that Adam knew Eve, his wife, all right? 
And so for those of you guys who don't know what the word new means, it means a sense of deep intimacy. All right. So they knew each other. And because of them being intimate and knowing one another, they bore two sons. And, and so a couple of things here. The word new, it, it, it means intimacy, right? It means all of those things. But what it really specifically targets is this idea to be prudent. All right. And this idea to be prudent, it, it means to show care and to have thought for the future. So Adam knew his wife Eve with a, 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 with, a, with a prudent manner, in a prudent manner, meaning he had thought, he had careful thought for the future. And, and that's really important, guys and girls, right, that when you get into a relationship, a lot of the times they're not prudent, right? They just want to be in and out, and then they're just gone. All right, and so in any healthy relationship, there's this prudence there. There's a showing of care and this thought for the future, All right? But we live in a time where it's like, no, man, just like go with your feelings, and if your feelings are gone, just dip out and move on to the next. But what we're begin what we're learning here, right, is that any healthy relationship to know someone intimately, right, is not just a momentary thing, but it's with careful thought to the future. It's showing care, not just in this time and place, but what is going to happen. What are the results of your intimacy? What are the results of you caring and walking with this person? There has to be prudence. Right? There has to be intimacy in that way. And, and as we read, one of the things about this is we don't know exactly if Cain was the firstborn. It doesn't say it. It doesn't say that Cain was the firstborn of Adam and Eve. We don't know how much time has passed since Adam and Eve had other kids, maybe. Um, and we don't know that Abel was a second son, right? We know just somewhere along the way that Adam and Eve had Cain, and somewhere along the way, Adam and Eve had Abel. And why is that significant? So why is that significant? The significance is not that Cain and Abel were the first and second sons of Adam and Eve. Right, that's not what it's saying. What is, what is significant in this milestone in Scripture is why we're talking about Cain and Abel is because something is going to happen that has never happened yet in history. Right, so in the time of Adam and Eve, what is about to happen has not yet happened before. All right, so verse 3, it says this, In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord, this is important, the Lord had regard. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, meaning it's after you. But you must rule over it. You must rule over it. The first thing is this, is that we are called to have authority over ourselves, to take ownership of who we are. And with that, we are called to have authority over this world, meaning to steward it well. And what happens is sin causes us to lose this authority because we give it away. Right? If you do not do well, sin is crouching at your door. Its desire is contrary to you. You have to rule over it. You see, when sin comes, to, comes into our lives, what we're doing is we're essentially giving away our authority. Right? We're giving away the image of God. And, and, and that's a very regretful thing that we do. Instead of taking ownership of it, right? what do we do? What did Adam do? Instead of taking ownership, he blamed other people for the fall. He's like, well, Eve did it. 
Right? And, and that's what we do with, with sin in our life is that we begin to release our authority and we give it to someone else. Hey, it's not my fault. It's, it's because of this. It's because of that person. It's because of my circumstance. And so what we lose is this authority over ourselves, this ability to not just rule but to steward right, our bodies, our minds, and our hearts. We give it away. And we give it away because we don't realize how precious this ability, this privilege to steward is for us. We have a great privilege of being given this authority to rule and to steward well with God. And we give it away so easily. I remember when I was younger, I used to collect a lot of cards, like bass, like sports cards. And I, I need to find them because they're a lot of money right now. I, if I sell my cards, I think I can get like close to like six, seven thousand dollars for all of them. But there is this one card, right? I, I used to go to this mall called Landmark Mall. So if you've ever seen uh, Wonder Woman two, um, she's fighting in this mall in DC. That was a mall that I used to go to all the time. All right, and in that mall, they would we had like these um, these card tables where you go and you buy cards and you trade cards with people. And I had this Georgetown um, rookie, or not a rookie card, but Allen Iverson's Georgetown um, card, b basketball card. And it was, at that time and place, it was about like $450, right? And by now, it's probably like doubled or at least tripled that amount. But I had that card, and I, and I brought it because I really wanted this um, Michael Jordan All-Star card, where um, in the All-Star game, he wore like um, baby blue, where they wore baby blue. Uh, and I really wanted it. And so I made the exchange. But what happened was, was that the dude gave me a dud. Gave me a dud. And so I gave away something that was precious, right, for this dud, worthless card. And I couldn't get it back. Right? I couldn't get it back because it was a trade and there's no take backs right, at that time. And, and I share that story because one, I'm really sad about that AI rookie card. I wish I had it, you know? But also, that, that, that's what sin does often, is that it masquerades as something more valuable. But at the end of the day, it's a dud, it's a fraud. And you give away something that was so precious the ability to have authority over yourself. And this is the thing. God judges our life as acceptable or as unacceptable. Right? Because he says here that he had regard for Abel and he had no regard for Cain's offering. And that's really important for us to hear today because often we just chalk up to God, God, your love, you are accepting of all things. No, there are some things to him that are acceptable, and there are some things to him that are unacceptable. But his intention in accepting and not accepting is to give life. Why? Because, how do we know this? Because in verse 6, he says this, Why are you angry? Right? Why has your face fallen? If you do well, will it not be accepted? See, God is not arbitrary. He's not like, he's not a shifting shadow. But he is someone who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And what he is intending for Cain in this moment is to say, then, if you do well, you will be accepted. Right? His intention is to correct him. Why? Because God disciplines those he loves. He corrects those who are his sons and daughters. And so he goes to Cain and he says, man, you just have to do this. You just have to do better. God will judge our life. He will judge it. And so we come to God with the offering of our life. And the labor is the sacrifice we put forth. He has no partiality. He's not arbitrary. He doesn't change his mind. But what does God look at? 
God looks at your heart in regards to holiness. That is acceptable to God. Your heart in regards to holiness. Meaning, are you bearing the image of God in your life? Which translates into perfect love. Meaning, are you bearing the image of God? Are you carrying His image in your life? And so that means, church, that we have to pay attention to our holiness. We have to pay attention to what we are doing in our life. And this is the thing. We have no fear in what God has to say about our life, but we fear what other people have to say about our lives. We're so afraid of what other people think about us, and we have no regard to God judging our life as acceptable or as unacceptable. It says in Scripture, don't be afraid of the one who can kill your flesh. Be afraid of the one who can kill your flesh and your soul. God is going to judge our life as acceptable or not. And our call is to offer our life. And the labor that we put forth is a sacrifice that we're putting down. And so we have to pay attention to our holiness. We have to pay attention to, are we bearing the image of God in our life? We have to be more afraid and show reverence to what God says, not what other people say about us. But most of the times, right, if I talk to people, oh, I'm just afraid of what other people are going to think. It's never, oh man, I don't know what God thinks about this. It's always about what other people think. Pay attention to your holiness. And so this examination, it comes from God. He is the one that is holy and unchanging. And so God has an image that is to be followed, which is to be a homemaker. All right, that's what we learned in Genesis 1, is that God created a place of home for us. And that's the image that we are to follow, is to be homemakers in this world. And so Sundays, when we gather on Sundays, guys, it's a time to check yourself. It's a time to bring your offerings to God as an act of worship. And so he's not shifting around, changing his mind. You don't come to church on Sundays wondering what kind of God you're going to get. No, he is always going to be who he is. And so Sundays, when we gather, it becomes a place where we check ourselves because God's not changing, so we're not going to have to change with him, right? He is always forever the same, right? And we line ourselves and we check ourselves to see, okay, am I aligned with this or am I misaligned with it? Are you ever have friends in your life? You just never know what kind of friends you're going to get with them, right? One day they'll be a really happy friend. One day they'll be like a really moody friend. Another day they'll be like a really needy friend. Like you, some of us, we have friends who are just like, they're always someone very different, right? You just never know how to approach them, right? And it's so tough. It's so difficult to be friends with those people. I'm at an age now where it's like, I don't give those kinds of people a time and place in my life. Like, I don't have time for y'all anymore, right? Those who are just shifting all the time. Like, it is so tiring. And God's not like that. We don't have to worry about, oh, is God in a good mood today? Is God gonna, we don't have to worry about that. He doesn't change. And so we know exactly what we're going to get with him. And so this is important. Charles Spurgeon, he says this, discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. Anyone can do that. Discernment is this, is knowing the difference between right and almost right. Discernment is knowing the difference between right and almost right. And so if we're called to bear the image of God, what are you building right now in this world what are you building what are you investing in 
See, a lot of us are going to be okay with this. Oh, I'm here, aren't I? Isn't that enough? At least I'm going to church. At least I'm, I'm here on Sundays. And what happens? He passes by and he, he leaves unnoticed in so many of our lives. When we pay attention to our holiness, it gives us a discerning ear and heart to know what is right and what is almost right. And so we bear that image to become homemakers. We bear that image to become more like him. See, Cain responded in anger. I said his face fell. Right, you remember, if you, I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Like, you'll take something from a baby. Right? You shouldn't do that. But, you know, if you, like, play around, you take something from a child or, like, a toddler. You know how, like, their face, like, they'll be happy, and then they just go, like, like they just get downcast, right? When you upset someone, they just face falls. That's what Cain did. Right? His face, he responded in anger. His face fell. Abel was allowed to make the sacrifice because God was merciful. So communion with God is to walk in his image. That life is blessed and provided for. When you walk in his image, when you commune with him, that is a life that God blesses. That is a life that God gives provision for. He's not going to give provision for you to do whatever you want to do, to follow your dreams. But when you commune with him and when you bear his image, that life is blessed and provided. So this is something we need to understand. God, who God is, is determined not by our imagination, but what God has revealed to us. All right? You can't imagine something about God. It is something that he has revealed to us. That is the only thing we know about God. And this is the thing. When we walk in communion with him, the currency is our faith. The currency to show, right, that we walk with him is our faith. And 2020, man, did it hurt for a lot of us, right? It showed where our faith really is, if there was any. But for a lot of us, right, who have stood through the test, who have gotten through 2020, you have realized it hurt like heck. 2020 hurt like heck. But... It has revealed the preciousness of Jesus. For some of us, we realize, oh my gosh, God, faith, Jesus is all I need. It hurt to get here. Yes, it did. As I've shared with you guys, rejection upon rejection all over the place. But what? What have we been learning in 1 Peter Right? Gold is nothing compared to the everlasting currency of faith. This faith that doesn't, as we read in Hebrews, it doesn't diminish, it doesn't grow old, it doesn't fade away. That is what it means to have communion with God. And with Cable he, or Cain, here he he we see that God wants Cain to do well. He wants him to do well. If you do well, will you not be accepted? But sin is crouching at your door. It's waiting, as we, as we heard from P. Tim, it's waiting for an opportune time. Right? It's waiting for the right time to pounce on you. That's why we have to rule over it. So verse 8, Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. All right, why did he? God was just talking to him about himself. Why did he have to go to Abel? All right, Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. All right, the first murder. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? 
And the Lord said to him, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. So you have to ask yourself, why did Cain look to Abel? Why was Cain angry at Abel? This was between Cain and God. And God said to him, man, if you just do good, would your offering not be accepted? He was worried about others instead of himself. Does that sound familiar? Right? It sounds a lot like the Pharisees. Right? They didn't care about what I had to do. They cared about, man, what is he doing? What is that person doing? Cain could have corrected it in his heart. But instead, he looked to someone else and he got angry. He's so obsessed with the other person. Man, we live in a time right now, we are so obsessed with other people and what they're posting and what they're saying. Oh my gosh, did you hear what they said? Oh my gosh, do you see what they're posting? Do you see what they're talking about? We're so obsessed with the other person that we are blinded, just like Cain, in our own pursuit of holiness in our own pursuit of holiness. You see, discipleship is not about controlling, but it's about being an example. I just be an example. We don't need to hear everyone's opinion all the time. I know we're all COVID experts, we're all political experts, we're all sports experts, we're all experts in everything. And we, man, you see that, you see that? We're, we're so obsessed with what other people are doing. And we look at it and we're like, oh my gosh, I wish I can do that. Why can't I do this? Why can't I have that? Right? We're so obsessed with other people. And so, when you choose the other focused life you will always be a wanderer that's what happened to Cain he became a fugitive and he became a wanderer right? when you choose to focus on other people's lives you will always be a wanderer that's what happened to Israel in the desert they wandered because they're looking at other people but what? God stayed with them, even in their wandering. And we have to understand this. God is not required to receive our sacrifice. He's not required to receive it. But why does he receive it? Because of mercy. How is mercy possible for Abel and for us? It's because of Jesus. God said it in his heart, the fulfillment of redemption through Jesus, who was there from the beginning. And so for the Old Testament people, they look forward to their Savior. For us, we look back. And it's the same power. It's the same power. Right? How, how is Abel connected to Jesus? Right? How is, how is Abel connected? Abel's offering possible because of Jesus is because all throughout Genesis we see the story of Jesus. In Genesis 1, we see Jesus as king, right? The king homemaker. In Genesis 2, we see that you, you give a body, piece of your body, so that someone else can live. That's Jesus. In Genesis 3, it reveals the power of the cross, the redemption of the cross that is going to happen. In Genesis 4, what we've just read is that the righteous, right, the righteous is looked upon with contempt, right? Abel, or Jesus, is the better Abel. Cain is the religious people who are busy looking at other people and focused on other people's lives. 
And you see what happens is later on in verse 23, Lamech says to his wives, and, and it became an unnatural thing. All of a sudden, people started to have more than one wife, right? He says, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is 77-fold. So what happened? Sons of Cain, right? There's a pattern now in the lineage of Cain. It's murder. It's death. It's focusing on other people. And so we have a choice. We can be sons of Cain or we can be sons of God. Because you see, offspring, it just means that you're just children, right? You don't have a choice. You don't choose your parents, right? Offspring is offspring, but sonship, Sonship is to choose to reflect the image. When you say that you have sonship, it means that you're choosing to reflect the image. And so there's a big difference. We're not just offsprings, right? But we choose to have sonship, meaning we choose to reflect the image of God. And so there's an image that you're going to be reflecting, in your life there's an image that you're going to be building into what is it right what is it so what do we do what do we do people who are unfamiliar with god's presence what they do is they look for an environment where it can happen so what we need to do the first thing that we need to do is we need to become a person that does not have to come back to God because we are with God all the time. Right? Some of us, we can't get into the presence of God because of the right music, right? Or because we're at home or the lighting. Right? We, don't, we can't get into the presence of God. But if you're always with God, right, you don't have to rely on your environment. It's kind of like Hulk. Right? His secret is just always be angry. Right? I'm not saying be angry all the time, right? I'm saying be in Jesus all the time. Be a person that does not have to come back to God. Be someone who is always with him all the time. Bear his image in everything that you're doing. Second thing is this. We know, right? We know love. We know we love Jesus by our consistency, not our perfection. All right, we know we love Jesus not by our consistency, but by, or we know we love Jesus by our consistency, not by our perfection. In John, First John, chapter five, verse three, it says this. Right? For this is a love of God that we keep his commandments. Right? That's how we love God. We keep his commandments. It's the consistency of it. See, love in its very nature produces consistent characteristics in our life. Love in its very nature produces the consistency. All right? The obedience of faith. So on earth, while we're here, love, what it looks like, it looks like obedience. And so love is cherishing or treasuring Jesus. Faith is our trusting Jesus. And our obedience is doing what he says. And even though those three, faith, trust, and love are very distinct things, they're inseparable. They're inseparable. You can't love God without trusting Him. Right? And you can't trust Him without obeying Him. So naturally, we cannot love Christ if we live in persistent disobedience to Him. Alright, that's heavy stuff. Love produces in us consistency and it's inseparable with faith 
It's inseparable with trust. It's inseparable with obedience. And we can't love Jesus. We can't say we love Jesus if there is a persistent disobedience. If there is a constant inconsistency. So that's how we measure our love for him. Not by perfection, but for our consistency. And the third thing is this. Is we will either love God we will either love what God loves or we will love what other people love. And it's this idea of mimetic or mimetic, I don't know how you say it, desire. And it's a scientific thing, which means it, it models um, who endow like uh, objects with value. So when someone else has it, you want it even though you never thought about it, right? It happens all the time with small things and big things, you know? So like yesterday, while the praise team and stuff, they were practicing, um, for some reason we got starting, we started talking about phone cases. Um, one person had a clear phone case that turned yellow, right? And then someone else had a phone case with like, um, like a little handle thing, right? And it was really cool. Like you just you can make your phone stand and you can do stuff with it, uh, like a ring, and you can hold it. And in my mind, I was like, "Oh man, that's pretty neat. I want it." I never did I think about having another phone case, but seeing someone else use it and and and, and have it, I went home and I like Google or not Google, I Amazon. I looked for it, right, to see if I really wanted it or not. And so there's this thing, there's this desire in us where when someone else has it, right, even though you've never thought about it, even though you never desired it, when you see someone else having it, you just want it, right? We do that with clothes. We do that with music. We do that even with the way that we act. We do it all the time. It happens with big or small things, and so you will either love what God loves if you're walking in his image, or you're going to love what other people love. And you will, if that's the case, you're always going to be a wanderer. You're always going to be restless because you're always looking at other people. You're judging them. You're going to live a life of Cain. Or will you love what God loves? to bear his image, to walk this world humbly. And so you got to look to the source of life. That's God. We look everywhere else. We look everywhere else to tell people, hey, like me. Tell me I'm beautiful. Right? We put on our story about the post so that people, more people will look at it because the algorithm on Instagram is all messed up. Right? We do these things so that people can see me. Text me back. Right? How many of us get like emotional distress when someone doesn't text you back or when they leave you on read? Right? Someone's like, oh my gosh, please text me back. Affirm me. We look everywhere for affirmation. We look everywhere else but the source. That source is Jesus. That's the image that we are called to bear. The more you walk in his image, guys, the more you're going to feel alienated in this world. Why? Because you're not of it. You're not of this world. If you find yourself in that place, it's good. If anything, this time, for me, 2020 just showed me 100% clearly that I don't belong here. I'm a citizen of another world that's to come. And you're going to feel, if you bear his image in this world, you will feel more and more alienated. That's why it is so important as image bearers that we hold on to 
his presence. We hold on to him. Because if we don't, we will get lost. We will become wanderers. See, a lot of us, we realize that because we don't come to church anymore on Sunday and on Saturdays physically, that suddenly you have so much more time on the weekend. Oh my gosh, I have so much time on Saturdays and Sundays. And what happens is that we miss church once and then twice. And then now some of our friends, our brothers and sisters, are not coming out to our service anymore. See, that's how easily it is to divert from the truth. That's how easy it is to drift away. That's how easy it is for sin who is crouching at your door waiting for an opportune time. He's not coming trying to bust down the door. He's going to gently open it. Like, hey, come on, let's go. And the next thing you know, right, you're, you're all in this world. Who stirs you to treasure Jesus more? Who possesses godliness that you lack? Who lives passionately for the mission to make Jesus known and glorified in this place? Consider their examples and identify ways in which you can imitate them. Bear the image of God. All right, praise him. You guys can come up. And we'll just lift up um, just one prayer, maybe two prayers. But I want you guys to just take a moment to just reflect. What kind of offering are you presenting to God? All right, what kind of life are you building right now? See, what is acceptable to him is the one who obeys. It's not perfection, right? Because Jesus already did that. But it's, our, it's in our persistent consistency in trying to love him by following what he says. That's what it means to bear his image. And that's what it means to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. If we choose to look at other people, then we will always, always be a wanderer. And so you have to really check yourself because to be honest, there's a lot of LARPers, live action role players who think that they're a Christian and they're not. They think they know the truth, and so they think they're okay. okay. And, and so, so there's no humility in them. There's no desire to know Jesus. But God, in his goodness, right, he'll discipline those he loves. If you're not being disciplined by God, then you have to be worried. Because he disciplines those he loves. Even to Cain, he says, man, I want you to do well. I want you to do well. Bear my image. Reflect the image of God. That is what sonship is. And so let's take a moment and let's lift that up in our prayer. Oh, that God, what I offer to you, I want to reflect your image. I want to walk in your commandments. I want to be in obedience to you. That is what is acceptable to him, to bear his image in that way. 
And so let's take a moment and let's just ask for that grace, that kind of mercy in our life. Because you can't, I can't do it apart from him. That's what we try to do. We try to do things without Jesus. But it shows us to carry his image. We need him with us, in us. And so let's take a moment and let's just pray, God, help me to bear your image, to reflect, to choose to reflect the image of God, to walk in obedience with you. I don't want to be like Cain. I don't want to be other-focused. I don't want to look at other people. But I want to walk in your image. I want you to be my source, my compass. And so let's take a moment and let's express that in our prayer. Let's pray. those things let's now ask God God I want to look to you and I want to love you with everything that I am I want you to be my source I've looked everywhere but it's in you I find life I want to let these things go so that nothing holds me back from loving you and to be loved by you sin as it crouches at the door for an opportune time we're called to rule over it so have authority over yourself don't give it away don't give your authority don't give your image away to foolish relationships to foolish promises to things of social media to TikTok, to snapchat like those things are not sources of life they're not places of affirmation. Let Jesus be that. Let him tell you who you are. Let him remind you of the cost to make us sons and daughters. Be reminded of his relentless love for you and for me. That's the source. He doesn't fail. He doesn't run out. And so he gives us the strength and the image of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to take ownership of ourselves so that we don't give it away to foolish things, but give it to the source that is Jesus. And so let's take a moment. Let's do that. Take authority over yourself. Stop giving it away to other people. Stop giving it away to mindless things. Give it to Jesus. It's only in Him that you will find peace. It's only in Him you will find, right, that it is where it needs to be. Take it. Don't give it away. Don't lose that authority. Put it in His proper place at the feet of Jesus. And so let's take a moment. Let's take that. If you've given it to other things, bring, take it back. Deny those things. And say, Jesus, here it is. Here am I. I want to bear your image. And let's lift that up as our prayer right now. And then we'll worship.
you for the cross. Thank you for the cross that you have carried. Thank you for your blood that was shed. You took the weight of sin upon your shoulders and sacrificed your life so I could live. Thank you for Thank you for the cross that you have carried. Thank you for your blood that was shed. You took the weight of sin upon your shoulders and sacrificed your life so I could live. Nothing is holding me back from you, Redeemer of my soul. Now nothing can hold me back from you. Your love will never let me go. See your love. Your Jesus, you make all 
walk into this love that Jesus gives us. Uh, thank you guys for coming, joining us on our Zoom here. The breakout room should be open soon, and you're just going to have to put yourself in your grade. If not, we'll place you in it. But yeah, thank you guys. Hope you guys had a good time today. Have a good small group, and let's continue to be blessed. Thanks, guys.